internet research. Uh, it's difficult, it's sometimes pretty boring, um, but uh, how do we do it the best way possible? So what we're going to do is imagine that this whiteboard here is the entirety of the internet. Okay, so when you need to search about meditation, what's the first thing that you're going to do? You're going to search the internet. You're going to go to Google, right? All right, so let's just try searching regular old Google for meditation, see what happens, right? So if I type in meditation, I'm going to get, okay, how to meditate from mindful. Okay, so let's click on this. Now that I'm here, but the question is how do I get these websites in front of me out of everything that's available over the whole internet. I'm going to let Matt Cutts from Google explain it. Hey Matt, could you explain Hi. to us? My name is Matt Cutts. I'm an engineer in the quality group at Google, and I'd like to talk today about what happens when you do a web search. The first thing to understand is that when you do a Google search, you aren't actually searching the web. You're searching Google's index of the web, or at least as much of it as we can find. All right. I'm going to pause it there for a second because what Matt Cuts and his super dorky shoes are trying to explain to us uh, is, is really important. So when you're searching Google, you're not searching the internet. You're searching only part of the internet, right? Let's say about this much. Can you guys see this line? Hopefully, right? All this is stuff that's just like on people's uh, home desk computers. There's also this dark web where there's just things that aren't that don't have the proper links to it uh, Where you can click into it from other websites and so Google can't find it. So hey Matt, how do you um, Make the internet searchable. How do you find what you what there is out there? We do this with software programs called spiders Spiders start by fetching a few web pages Then they follow the links on those pages and fetch the pages they point to and follow all the links on those pages, and fetch the pages they link to, and so on, until we've indexed a pretty big chunk of the web. Many billions of pages stored across thousands of machines. Now, suppose I want to know how fast a cheetah can run. Well, we're doing research on meditation, but okay. I type in my search, say, cheetah running speed, and hit return. Our software searches our index to find every page that includes those search terms. In this case, there are hundreds of thousands of possible results. How does Google decide which few documents I really want? By asking questions, more than 200 of them, like, how many times does this page contain your keywords? Do the words appear in the title, in the URL, directly adjacent? Does the page include synonyms for those words? Is this page from a quality website, or is it low quality, even spammy? What is this page's page rank? That's a formula invented by our founders, Larry Page and Sergey Brin, that rates a web page's importance by looking at how many outside links point to it and how important those links are. Finally, we combine all those factors together to produce each page's overall score and send you back your search results, about half a second after you submit your search. Okay, thanks, Matt. Okay, so I'm gonna point out a couple of things that he said that I think are super important. Google's algorithms care the most about keywords, where those words are in the title, and links, right? Links from other websites, and then if those keywords appear in those other websites that are linked to the website that you're looking at, right? The second thing is that he didn't say this, but people are lazy, right? Um, we never go on to the second or third page of Google's search results, we always just take what's right there. We usually click on the first, second, or third one, right? So the reason this is important is because there's uh, this job that a lot of people are doing nowadays called SEO, or search engine optimization. Um, so that's when people change their website on purpose in order to make sure that their Google results, uh, if somebody Googles something and it has to do with their company, that they their website comes up higher in the search results. So I'm gonna let uh, I'm gonna let GoDaddy explain a little bit more about that. You've heard the term SEO, but you're not sure what it's all about, or if you even need to care. SEO stands for Search Engine Optimization. SEO's goal is to get your website the best possible rank in organic or non-paid results on search engines such as Google, Bing, and Yahoo. Every day, millions of people search online for products and services. 
Years of research proves that people rarely look beyond the first page or two of results, and they most often click the links at or near the top of the page, which is where you want to be when people search for your products and services. Search engines use complex formulas and processes called algorithms to analyze, index, and rank the millions of sites on the web. You can optimize your site to align with these algorithms by applying techniques that act as signals to search engines. Search engines evaluate these signals and use them to assess where your website should rank compared to other sites. These signals include keywords, meta tags, and links to your site from other sites. An important thing to keep in mind is that search engines are sophisticated. They analyze for quality, not quantity, in order to provide search results that are relevant and trustworthy. The first step in optimizing your site is to think about your target audience. Who are they? What will they want to see and learn when they visit your site? What words or phrases are they likely to use to search for your products and services? Use that knowledge to create compelling, well-written content that engages your audience and spurs them to action. Remember, flooding your website with keywords that degrade the readability and appeal of your content will hurt your rank, not help it. So let's say I sell yoga mats, right? The number one thing I want in my whole life is to sell yoga mats. So um, I want people to who like buying yoga mats, who are interested in buying yoga mats, I want them to just come across my website as they do things that they normally do on the internet, right? So what are some things that yoga, people who buy yoga mats are uh, concerned with? Meditation, right? And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hire somebody to come in, write uh, articles about meditation. They're just gonna like make sure that it says the words meditation, it says the words yoga mats in that, um, so that when somebody like me who's trying to do research on meditation, types in meditation, it's gonna pull up their article, right? But that article isn't, the whole point of it isn't to give me good information about meditation, it's to make sure that I get to that website so that I look up at the top and I decide, oh, you know what, I could use a yoga mat to do meditation or I could buy this other product, right? And so they're not trying to give me the best, ed best information about meditation, they're trying to sell me yoga mats. I'm trying to sell you yoga mats if I'm that person, right? I've got all these questions I have to ask myself about is this good information, right? I'm getting a pop-up ad, see, that's telling me to put in my name and email. Um, I have to ask myself, like, it's, it, so this article was written by mindful staff. There's not even a person uh, that wrote this. Um, meditation, I mean, they want me to sign up for a newsletter. What even is mindful? Guided meditation. They're a magazine. Okay, so the main thing that these people want from me is for me to subscribe to their magazine. What does that involve? Do they want my money? Yep, they want my money. So there you go. Okay, so there's four things that we know now about when I do Google, when I use Google to do internet research. One, I'm only seeing a part of the internet and a part that is categorized and organized by popularity and by how many links there are to other things. Two, that Google has already made thousands of decisions about what pages should appear in front of me um, before I even make the decisions about which websites I want to see, right? Google is doing a whole ton of work to put stuff in front of me. Um, uh, like this guy, Jeffrey Hammerbacher, who used to work for Facebook said, the best minds of my generation are thinking about how to make people click ads and that sucks, right? So there are hundreds and dozens of smart, very smart people who work on websites using search engine optimization to manipulate them so that the things that you see in your Google search results are things that where you will be clicking on ads and you will be most likely to spend money. The people that want your eyeballs on their stuff, they want you to spend money at their website, not necessarily to give you the best information. So it was only three things, I said four, but those were three things. So the big punchline here is your habit of going to Google to find the best information is more than likely just going to get you looking at websites that want your money. So what do you do instead? Okay, so with Google Scholar, Google has already done this thing where they've kind of cordoned off a part of the internet, right? 
that looks like this. And what they've done is they've only allowed things in this web search bar. When you type into this search bar, you're getting stuff from Google Scholar that's already been set aside as being peer reviewed, as being reliable information published in reputable, reputable journals and things like that, right? So when you search Google Scholar, you're not searching the entire internet. You're searching only a part of it, part of it that Google has found and indexed, but that is also marked off as reliable. Okay, so now I'm gonna try Google Scholar. Oops. Nope. So now I'm gonna try Google Scholar. So we'll go scholar.google.com. All right, so now I'm going to put in meditation. And already, so I've got mindfulness and meditation. So I've got an article in from 1999 I can already tell it's been cited by 646 people. I get related articles and I get two versions. So I've got human names, right? Right from the beginning. This is written by a staff of a company. Um, so if I click on it, it takes me to APA PsychNet. I get an abstract clinical therapy, right? So I already have so many clues that this is really reliable, good information, and I didn't have to ask myself those questions first. So one thing about Google Scholar, though, is that this is this is uh, papers written by scientists for scientists. So it's going to be difficult to get the information out of there. It's going to be hard to read. It's going to be full of jargon. But um, I do have a link to an article down in the description to help you learn how to read those articles better and more easily get the information out of them. Okay, there are some really cool tools on Google Scholar. Like I said, the cited by is amazing. So if you got an article that you know is your thing and it's going to help you, you can click the cited by and you can find people who used that article to do more work to build on it and do more science from that, right? 646 people have done that here, right? So I can keep looking and find great stuff about meditation that way. Also, this is one's really cool. If you click on these quotation marks, I get the MLA citation right there that I can just grab and copy and paste it into my paper. And then I've got everything I need to make sure that I'm citing my sources and all that kind of stuff. So if you just get in the habit of going to Google Scholar first, you're much more on track to get reliable, good, peer reviewed information without having to look for it very hard. And it's gonna be a much better place to start for you to do internet research. Your knee-jerk reaction to doing internet research is always going to be to go to Google or hopefully now Google Scholar. But there's another place you can go, right? And even if it's not the books inside the library, it's the library website, which is an amazing tool for you to use. Uh, this is something that you pay for in your student fees and tuition and that the church pays for uh, with tithing. And so this search bar is different. Okay, so when you search in the library search bar, now you're not searching the internet. You're not searching this part of Google Scholar. You're searching for something that looks about like this, right? So there's gonna be quite a bit of overlap with the things you can find on Google Scholar, but Google Scholar may have more things. Um, you're gonna find some things that aren't available to Google on the internet search, but then you're gonna find other stuff that is available to Google in its regular search, right? Okay, so let's type in meditation here. All right, so meditation. So one thing that it gives me is this like a research portal. So I can just jump into here and start getting some definitions. Um, some good information, a bibliography. So these are all great sources that have been, you know, given the stamp of approval by the library. Um, yeah. And so none of these are clickable links, but um, I've already got great stuff right off the bat from there. Then the other thing I've got is each one of these tells me what kind of document it is first. So this is a government document. This is a video. There's other video recordings. There's an ebook. Um, government documents, right? So if I only want scholarly articles, what I can do is come over here to this bar, which is just loaded with great tools to help me. Click on scholarly peer-reviewed journals. 
And now I've gone from having lots of good information now very specific good information. Reduction perceived stress following transcendental meditation practice or associated with increased brain regional connectivity at rest. Cool. So, um, right. So uh, one other thing too is this. Sometimes it'll just say PDF full text and you can click on it and get it immediately. If that's not there, then we have lots of resources through interlibrary loan or um, other things. Sometimes you can get it easily, sometimes you can't, but the librarians almost always can get things for you if you can't just click on it and get it immediately. But there it is, the, there's the whole text, and now I can download the PDF, right? All right, so I highly recommend you come to the library, meet the librarians, get to know them, tell them what your projects are that you're working on. They are anxious and eager to help you get the best information that you can get um, based on what they have at the library and they're awesome people. Okay, so there you have it. Searching regular Google for school research um, is going to get you a lot of stuff, but mainly stuff that just wants your money and it's gonna be manipulated information using search engine optimization to um, get business uh, stuff in front of you rather than good information, right? So there's that. Second, using Google Scholar is going to be a, the, a great way to start getting reliable information very fast. It's full of great tools, but it's going to be harder stuff to read because it's written for scientists by scientists. So a kind of good middle ground there is going to the library where you're going to get good information. There's librarians who are there to eager to help you and um, you know they can find you stuff that's going to fit better into what you're doing and help you make sense of it and read it. So there you go. Internet research, hopefully that helps you uh, as you move forward, mainly just to get you out of the habit of relying on Google for everything. If you don't get anything else out of this video, hopefully you get that. Good luck.